be. I raised raise these children and they, re, they, they, you know, failed me, et cetera. And this whole complaint about how B'nai Israel went wrong, that's the parent and child mashal. And there's a parallel mashal of the person who, the famous Shirat HaKerem, right? The, the poem of the vineyard where Hashem says, I planted this wonderful vineyard. I did everything to make it grow well. And look how it turned out. So this is still mashal of the, of the parent and the child, the father and son, and the, the um, owner of the vineyard and the vineyard. And if you look at them, they're very much parallel one to the other. Okay, where does this come from? So you go to Hazinu, and very simply, Hatsur Tamim Palo Kihod Racham Mishpat, El Munav and Avot Sadiq Yashar Hu, and talks about Sedek and Mishpat, which is what Yeshayah Paragal talks about, and when he returns to him, Parag Nevav, et etc. But the Kitsur, Hatsur Tamim Palo Kihod Racham Mishpat, God's ways are justice and righteousness, etc. And then it goes on, Pasuk Hay. She hate lo, lo banav mumam, dori kesha salto. As Ramban explains, lo banav, b'nei Israel here are described contrary to how we're usually described as Hashem's children. Here we're described as not being like God, not imitating God, and therefore being lo banav, his non children. Okay, his non children. And this is the, the children who don't follow in the ways of the parents. This is the lo banav. Dor ikeshu taltol instead being yashar like Hashem, straight, taltol, twisted like the word pila, okay, etc. Halohu avicha kanecha, right? Hashem is after all apparent, etc. And pasuk bav, and then we go to pasuk lamed bet later in Hasinu, kimi gefen sedom gafnam umishadmot ad mora in vemo in verosh ashkelot morot lamo, right? The 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 bitter grapes of stone. The, the bad grapes, the, the bitter or poisonous grapes of, of stone and Amora. And of course, you look at, at uh, Yeshayahu, what does Yeshayahu talk about when he talks about the grapes? He talks about this karam. He says, Pasuk uh, Zion, ki karam Adonai tzvot beit Yisrael, be'ish yudan neta shashuav, ba'ikav la mishpat. Hashem looks forward to our producing mishpat, as it talks about in Hazinu. But the Hine Mispach, with Saka, the Hine Tsaaka. And this is one of the many references to Stone, Tsaaka, Stone Vamara, Kiraba, right? The, the Tsaaka, the scream, the cry of the oppressed in Stone. This is, again, all these, this whole double mashal of Stone and the grapes of Stone, the bitter grapes of Stone, the Shirat Hakarim, and the idea of the, the Tsaaka Mishpa, and the idea of, of the child that. Is disappointing, etc. This is all straight out of the playbook of Hazinu, and that's where it all comes from. So that's just in terms of the introduction. Okay, so we move now to Parakva. Before we move to Parakva, a word of caution. We're not turning the page to, to page three just yet, because one quick word of warning. We have to always be careful when we have a word or a phrase or a, a sentence even that we recognize from liturgy, from Zmirot, from Tefillah, whatever it might be, we have to be very careful if we then see it in Tanakh to understand that it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as it does right, in, in our liturgy because the, the, the Rishonim, et cetera, even early, Rishonim and others, but the people who wrote Piyutim and Goratilo very much took Sukim and Murshabet them, right? They put them into new sayings, new context, and taking on a whole new meaning, right? So it was never clearer to me than when I, for the first time I learned Eov, and I'm beginning to say for Eov, and I get to Paragimo, and I come to the Pasuk that we all recognize from Zmirot, right? Which is, which is, the Sham Yanuchu Yigiyechoa, right? Such beautiful words about the grave. About death, right? <laughs> I thought it was about Shabbos, right? I go and get Eo, and that's all it's talking about. The Sham Yanuchi Yechol, very clearly, you look at it in context, it's, its meaning in Tanakh is totally different than what it is in Zmirot, right? And that's a cautionary tale that we have to keep in mind. I say that because we're about to come to a Pasuk that's very, very familiar, that we all are going to recognize immediately, but don't assume it means the same thing, or at least has the same emphasis 
I would say, as it does in Tzvila. Yishayahu Perek Vav, okay, page three of the booklet. You know, everyone looked at the booklet and said, four pages and it's such small print, how are we ever going to get through this? And don't worry, it'll be okay. Yishayahu Perek Vav. So I'd like to read a few psukim that are probably very familiar, certainly some of it, if not all. And let's just think, just think of the following question as we go through it. I'm gonna ask everyone to please give me one word, just like to shout out one word and when we finish reading through it, that summarizes this section, okay? What the topic is, just the topic, not what it says about, just the topic. And here comes the key pasuk that I'm going to ask about in a moment. Pasuk Yemo, pasuk that I'm sure we all know. We'll read one more pasuk and then we'll come back to pasuk Gimel. Okay. So if we were to summarize, okay, the karazel zevi amar kadosh 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 hashem tzachom below chalas kodo. One word, you get just one word. What what word would you choose? Dusha. Anyone have a different answer? What? Srafim. And we have another answer. I made it easy by, by not only reading all the psukim, but we but asking the question Dafka today. Dafka now. What? Korban. The topic of this pasuk in in, in Yeshayahu is Korban. Okay, I'll show you in a moment. There's absolutely no question. The topic of this pasuk is Korban. How do I know that? Because look, the Srafim declare the following. They call out to each other and they say, Kadosh, 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 et cetera, whatever they say. I don't know what that means yet, but they call out whatever they call out. They cry out whatever they cry out. They make this declaration. Pasuk Dalit. If God forbid a person is in a building, in a house, and the pillars of the house start to tremble by and it starts to fill with smoke. What will be your immediate conclusion about that building? Get out, right? It's about to, it's, it's being destroyed. There's no question. And especially if those, and that's the result of the Kriya, Mikola Kore, the result of the Kriya of Kadosh, 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 Hashem Sokom Lokar's Kodo, is by Anuamota Sipim. And who is it that is making this declaration? Right? If there's smoke, there's fire. Who is saying this? Srafim, from the word Srefa. Where is this vision located? Where is it taking place? I don't mean. Right? Yishayahu says, I see this great throne with the Bod Hashem and it's. Representing the Shina, where where is this? It's Nechal, right? This is taking place in the Beit Nish. If the so the Bayit that we're talking about is the Beit Hamikdash. If the Bayit, the Beit Hamikdash, is filling with smoke and 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 shaking, is that a nevuah of korban? Right? Even if I don't know what a single word means, I know it's a nevuah of korban. Do you understand that? Right? Does that make sense? Especially if the Srafim are the ones, and understand. That is what this message is. It's exactly parallel to Yechezkel Perak Aleph. It's the same base, you know, the other Masem Rekaba. The Nebuah is one of Korban. Why? Because what does it say? Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Hashem Sakot. Hashem is Kadosh. Hashem is transcendent. Hashem is not, you know, transcendent is probably as we can get, so we'll leave it at that. What's Kvod Hashem? Another word for Kvod Hashem is all the Tanakh Kvod Hashem refers to the Shrina, Hashem's presence. It's Kvod Hashem from Chumashan. Kvod Hashem is the Shrina. So the Shrina is Milochal Aretz Kvodo. 
It fills the entire world. Now, if you stopped a kid on the streets of Yerushalayim in the days of Yeshayahu and said, where is the Shina? right? There's no ways yet. There's no move it yet. No GPS. I want to find the Shina. Where am I going to, where, where should I go to find the Shina? What is every kid going to say in the days of Yeshayahu? It's in the Beit HaMikdash, right? Go to the Beit HaMikdash, you'll see the Shina. What does Yeshayahu say? Melo cholaretz kivodo. You understand why it's in the Vua Korban? Right? When, when Shlomo Amel built the Beit HaMikdash, Melo cholaretz kivodo. What does he say? We have the Pasuk here, so we can see it inside. Melacham al perachet, Pasuk Kav Zayin. Ki haumnam yeshev Elohim al aretz. Hine ha-shamayim u-shmei ha-shamayim lo yichal kulucha. Kim abayat azeh ha-shabaniti. Can we put God into a house? Can we fit the Shina in a bayat? Doesn't make sense. And then he goes on to explain how it does make sense. Right? And the Kuzari explains more that Shina mala, not Shina makom, and we don't have to get involved in, but the point is that if the Beit Mish is functioning the way it's supposed to, so we have a Shachan to Betocham, that Hashem's presence is amongst B'nai Israel because of what we do in the Beit Mish. But it's not that Hashem is in the Beit Mish. But the point is that it's not working now. That's what Yeshua is saying. It's not working now. The Shina is not in the Mikdash. Where is the Shina? As Yechezkel says in the parallel to this later on, right? That the Helen Lubitash Ma'at. That Baruch Kavod Hashem in Komo, that, that Hashem is everywhere. And that's a great consolation, but it's still an Avuah Forma, right? In other words, you don't have that one concentrated central place of the Mikdash. Kadosh, 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 Hashem Sapot, Malofa, Kodon, has tremendous meaning to us in a time when we don't have a bayit of the Shachan Tokham yet. So then we have at least a consolation of Malofa, Art Kodon. But understand, it's a nevuah of korban, and this is the cornerstone. This is the foundation nevuah. This is the hakdasha of Yishayahu, Perak Al. Hashem says to Yishayahu, "Well, but even before we get that, sorry, before we get that, pasuk hey baumar oy now oyli ki nigneti ki ish tamei svatayim anofi. We talk am tamei svatayim anofi yoshev ki tamelf adonai shlot ra uenai." So Yishayahu says, "Oy vei." I, my lips are impure, and the, my, amongst the nation that, you know, as we see how Yeshua is a microcosm of B'nai Israel, right? That he's Tmei Satayim, B'nai Israel is Tmei Satayim. And so Hashem says, okay, what's the solution? How is B'nai Israel, represented by Yeshua, going to be purified? So we read you know, the words very carefully. Pasuk Vav, Vayaf Eli Achad Min HaSrafim, Uviado Ritzbab Malkachayim Lakach Me'ala Mizbeach. How is the sin, the impurity of Yishayahu removed? By fire, by burning, right? By destruction in a destructive way. And that's a microcosm of the purification of B'nai Israel, time before Ban. We go forward. And Pasukhet, he hears a voice that, that he hears a voice with a message from Hashem that and me ashlaf me elechlanu, Baomar he didn't ishlach any. Shaul says I want to go because he wants to prevent the korban. Baomar lech v'amart lam azeh shemo shemu shemo v'al tavinu ura ova in v'al teidau hashmein lev amazeh v'asnav hafed v'nav hashapen yiru v'nav v'asnav yishma v'avol yavin v'shav rafalo. All this comes straight out of Hazinu. We're not going to take time for it, but if you look in Hazinu, if you know it by art, you recognize it right away. Okay, we continue. And this is what I want to focus on, because this is the key to the structure and the flow of the entire Sefer. It's the next couple of seconds. Okay, so please pay careful attention. But Omar, So you're giving me this mission, says Yeshayahu, to deliver this message of Korban. And I'm prepared to do it, but I want to know Ad Matai. What is the terminus? When does it come to an end? What's the end point of this, these Nevoahs of Korban? Talks about desolation and desolation, desolation. 
And the end point is the Rabbah Hazuvah Bekarvarts. By Perik Vav, if we haven't been asleep, we're tuned into the fact that everything in Shayao is based on Hazinu. And we recognize right away as soon as we hear the question of Ad Matai, and the answer is until we reach the point of Rabbah Hazuvah Bekarvarts, we should immediately recognize the words of Hazinu. When Hashem talks about the Ephes Atsur Vazu, right? The Ephes Atsur Vazu. The same idea of being totally alone, being totally abandoned, being totally desolate. And that's the Admatai. So we go to Hazinu and look at what it says there in Hazinu. And this, I think, is just mind boggling. Take a look, please, at right below, below Malachim Aleph. You'll see the words of, of, of Hazinu. Okay, and we're going to go down a little bit. Pasuk Lamed Vav. Ki yadin Adonai Amo Balavadav Yitnecham Ki yir'eh ki atlat yad ve'efes atzor ve'azul. Okay. Hashem says that ki yadin Hashem Amo Balavadav Yitnecham when will that take place? So when we reach the stage of the Ephes Hatsur Vazuv, the Rabbah Zuvah, the Karava Arts, in the words of Yeshayahu, when we reach that point, when the when we've had all this korban, all this, all this destruction, what then? Then we have the first half of the Pasuk. So if I only knew. <laughs> the first six chapters of Yeshayahu and no more. I'm reading it for the first time, chapter by chapter. And I get through chapter six, Parak Bab, and I read these to Kim and I understand where they're coming from. And I understand that's all based on, Yish on Hazinu. I have to go back to Hazinu to understand it in context. Then I could already predict in Parak Bab that there's a lot of Korban coming up in Sefer Yeshayahu. I'm going to read a lot about Korban in Yeshayahu. I'm going to read other things as well, but there's a lot of Korban. And I get to the end of the Korban section of Yeshayahu. When I finish Perik Vav through X, let's call it Lamitet, right? I come to the end of the first half of Yeshayahu. What must come next? What is going to be the next thing that I get to when I finish that first half of Yeshayahu and I begin the second half? What's the beginning of the second half going to be? Baal, Abadab, Yacham. So where, where's, what's Parak Mem going to be? Nachama. In other words, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, which is in fact Parak Parak Mem, right? which is the other foundation, Parak, the other pillar of Sefer Yishayahu, the, the foundation of the second half of the same. But I want to say more than that. It's not just the the nachamu nachamu ami, and that there's one nevu of nechama after another in the second half of Yeshayahu, and that's most of the second half of Yeshayahu is all these nevu of nechama and gula. But more than that, you look at Yeshayahu, and I'm giving just a few examples. There are more, but just a few examples. There is the greatest cluster anywhere in Tanakh. It's like half of all the examples in Tanakh. We know that B'nai Israel are called many things in terms of our relationship to Akash Baruch One of them is Avdi, that we're called Hashem's Eben. And it's not unique to Yishayahu, but it's most concentrated in the second half of Yishayahu, in, in the Mems and the Nuns. That's where you have one time after another. Just take a quick look at some of the examples, some of the simple examples. Vata Yisrael Avdi, Yaakov Asher, Asher Bechar Ticha, etc. In Perak Mem Alt, in Perak Mem Dalit. Atashma Yaakov Avdi, etc. Pasuk Pasuk Bet. Al Tira Avdi Yaakov. In Perak Mem Dalit, Pasuk Af Aleph, we have Tzor El Yaakov Yaakov Yisrael Ki Avdi Ata Atay Tzaticha Kevin Li, etc. And in Perak Mem Hey, right? Leman Avdi Yaakov, and it continues into the nuns. We come to Nun Bet. Etc. Why is that important? Because again, we go back to, to, to Hazinu, which is where Yeshayahu is coming from. In the same Pasuk, what does it say? Ba'al Abadav Yidnecha. And therefore, how B'nai Yisrael described, Al Tira Av Yaakov, etc. Right? Hashem describes us as his Evan. Right? That's, that's 
So we have that full picture of um, Hazinu there. Okay, let's turn to the final page. Sorry. <laughs> no, I did. Okay. So we have these part, oh, I'm sorry. Can we go back to page three for just a moment? Sorry. I don't want to overly tax your patients. So I'm not gonna go into some great detail, but I just wanna show you that if you look very quickly at the two boxes next to each other, one next to the other, okay? If you take a look at them, you'll see, and I highlight just a few examples. You can see one after another after another of the, the similarities in language between Parag Bab and Parag Mem. There's a very pointed contrast between these two Nebuah. Okay, there's so many, so many examples. I'm gonna go through them and all except for one of them, except for one. And that is that towards the end of the parak, we come to a few very fascinating sukkim. And please don't be choshe me of this particular example of it. Be choshe me of, of a lot of things, but the, I, I'm, I'm being, I think I'm being accurate. Number one, I understand that the words that we're about to look at are not etymologically related to the words in Parak Vav, okay? I know that. But it's what Chazal referred to in the Lama Ben Midot as Lashon Afal Lashon, it's not something that Yishonah made up, so then it comes to Chazal in the Lama Ben Midot, or very less than Ashur Yossi Aglili, that the one methodology of Chazal is Lashon Afal Lashon, that there are plays on words in Tanakh, that there are associations made between similar sounding words, even though they're not etymologically connected. So number one, I know that they're not etymologically connected, or I don't think they are in any case. I'm not assuming that they are, but, but they are connected in terms of the point that Yeshayahu is making. Yeshayahu is a master of, of plays on words all over the place, from one end of the same to the other, constantly. That's number one. Number two, that I think that I'm going to pronounce this correctly, please be don't be fooled by the fact that some popular songs have it pronounced differently. Okay, so it's not the same as in Dalem, it's, it's this is the way it is over here. So let's take a look. Pasuk Chafet and on. Okay, just a few psukim. Halo yadatim lo shamata, lo heyo la madonai, oreik sota aret, lo yaf lo yika, in cheke lutunato, no tain la yev koach, le no nim atzmai arbe, by yafu na arim, by yigau, bakorim kashol y kashelu. And here comes the word that's usually mispronounced. This is so important because look at what Yeshayahu is saying. Yeshayahu is talking about this idea of moving forward, running forward, and not becoming tired and weary. And he uses these words. And by the way, so much of this comes straight out of Hazinu. Uh, again, you say, well, ever at all, et cetera, but okay, you froze the problem. But Bikitsur, Bikoye Adonai Achlifu Koach, Yalu Ever Kanesharim, Yarutsu below Yigau, Yalhu below Yafu. In Perik Bam, in the Horban section, the solution was. The angel flew over and touched his mouth with the burning coal. The solution was korban. That's how B'nai Israel were going to become purified. But by contrast, in Perak Mem, the solution comes through reinvigoration, through renewal, through a new beginning of, of Gula, of Nechama. That's what Perak Mem is about. And there's a very pointed contrast between the two that plays out over here. Okay, let's turn to the last page. Just very quickly, I wanna just try to just bring everything together by a quick look at a few examples from Parak Samachvav. There are many, many more examples within this Parak alone, but just in terms of Parak Samachvav alone, it's really fascinating the way that this final chapter in Shayao weaves the strands of the three sections of the Shayao together. Okay, section one, the Introduction, al hey section two, the Korban section of, of Bav through Lamitet, and number three, the Nechama section of Mem through Samach Bav. So take a look at this. It begins with, Ko'amar Adonai, 
Hashamayim kis'i va'aretz hadom raglai is a bayit asher tibnu live is a makol menufati. It's a direct paraphrase of the Paschim Malachim of Shlomo Melch, which is the basis for for um, for Perak Vav. That's the first one. Okay. It returns to that and continues that in Pasuk Ted Vav. Ki hine Adonai ba'esh yavo ba'sifav merkavot merkavotav la'shiv la'shiv b'chema apo. The, the garato, the lave h, right? The fire, the destruction to fire. That's the the asiket um, vav. So that's the the first strand, the korban strand, the the strand of parak vav. In pasuk vav, pasuk vav, kol shalom eir kol mechal kol adonai meshalem mul. I'm oh, sorry, it's not pasuk one. Mul vav. Okay, that's part of so the of the korban one. But yud gimel ki ish asher imot nachamenu. This is, of course, right, the Nachamu Nachamu Ami, a Parak Mem. We go a little bit further, and Pasuk Chav Gimel, one of the most beautiful Psukim, and a Sefer that is entirely uh, consistent of uh, beautiful Psukim. Hashem says, on Shabbos, on Rosh Chodesh, we are Bnei Israel are going to come to my to to, to Beit Hamikdash to 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 see me, etc. Says Hashem. This is such a point of contrast, of course, to what it says in Parak Aleph, where it says in Pasuk Yudet, "Ki tavol le'ra'ot panai mitikeso mi'etem remos batzerai lo tosifu avi min chashav kitor toy vayli chodesh v'shabbat kro miklal lo uchal amen batzara." But Shechem. In place of Hashem saying that, who asked you to come and trample my courtyards with Beit Midash? Who wants you here? I don't want, I despise your Rosh Chodesh and your Shabbat and your Yom Tov. Instead, they that uh, that's indeed where we continue to go. Um, I want to again thank you all for joining and for uh, coming to close um, the, the agreement. And, and it's, I want to again thank the family for the opportunity and the pleasure of being able to learn together. And if there are any questions or rebuttals or whatever the case may be, uh, I'll try to stick around for a few more moments. I want to just uh, close on my kind host for the ride. But, uh, Couple minutes quickly. Okay, so I was either very clear or totally incomprehensible. But we'll hope for the form. Okay.